Professor Boyd assigned us this topic because we were both studying for auditing for the CPA exam. And it was actually a funny thing. Today was the day that going concern was my topic of the reading for the CPA Becker review. So I found it kind of fu funny coincidence. And my partner for this project is um, David. I don't know. Hey everybody, I'm David. <laughs> and all right, so we're gonna look at American Airlines and just an evaluation on them as a going concern. And then we're gonna look at short-term and long-term. Yep, so to start, the going concern principle is an assumption that an entity has the resources to continue operations indefinitely. Uh, an entity is assumed to be a going concern unless there is significant information available that insinuates the opposite. And generally from an auditor perspective, it's a 12 month outlook from the date the financial statements are issued. Uh, for purposes of our analysis though, we've decided to look at short-term and long-term just to give the two varying opinions. So now moving on, this is just directly from the AICPA guidance, which is essentially the rule book for auditors. And when auditors go through their normal uh, work papers and stuff, they'll come across information and trends that indicate that a company might be a going concern risk. And that includes uh, negative trends, uh, indications of financial difficulties, such as defaulting on loans, uh, defaulting on uh, other agreements or just a ton of debt on the balance sheet. Uh, internal matters, which could be work stoppages and external matters like uh, COVID-19 was for the last nine and a half months. Um, um, yeah, so those are just a few things that auditors should look out for. And if in aggregate, the auditor determines that there is significant risk for a company to continue operations, then they should also outline that in their audit opinion. Do you think the uh, firm would be fighting the going concern opinion? Like the accounting firm? No, uh, say that if I'm American Airlines, I'm the CFO of American Airlines. Am I going to fight you on this topic? Of course. It's going to, I think when you get a going concern opinion from your auditor, that will probably have a significant impact on your stock price and your uh, everything else that matters to the executives, which is okay. their compensation. So okay. I definitely think there would be pushback from management. Okay. Do you think there could be a disconnect between the actual, uh, an auditor coming up with a going concern and what the equity markets may value the company at? Uh, I think American Airlines is the epitome of that. Uh, right now, they are trading at like 16 bucks at a $10, million, uh, $10 billion valuation. And honestly, I think they should be trading around $5. Noah, do you want to take the uh, short-term outlook? Please just, sorry about that. I've been waiting for that call for two months. Um, we're, we decided to break this up into short-term and long-term because we felt in the short term, there were multiple reasons why they're not a going concern, but we did not feel that way for multiple years out. So we felt it'd be best to break it up into short term and long term with the view that short term, they're not going to be a going concern issue, but in the long term, they will be. In the short term, we feel there are a multitude of reasons why they're not going to be a going concern. Applying the authoritative definition, which David just discussed, leads us to conclude that at this time, they're not because we feel that COVID federal aid, their access to capital debt mark, capital and debt markets, their lack of debt coming due currently and different alternative means of capital make it so they can raise the necessary funds to sustain themselves over the near term. So you looked at it from their ability to raise funds. Yeah, and they're basically free funds that the government's giving them to basically fund a lot of their expenses, whether it is the um, salaries, the, um, the loans from the treasury that are just that only required a little bit of share options, but are basically just free capital that they can access. And just that, as we've seen this year through the uh, hot IPO market and the um, growing debt markets, companies with the Federal Reserve bond buying of easy access to capital. 
there are multiple different types of federal aid programs that American Airlines benefited from. These, these programs were needed due to the stay-at-home orders and continuing measures that still go to this day to combat the COVID-19 pandemic that has seen the airline's revenues and revenues per mile shrink. American Airlines in quarter three saw a 72% year-over-year decline in passenger revenue miles and a 43.1% decline in passenger revenue per mile. This would ordinarily single for most accountants that a company would be at risk for a going concern because their business took a severe downturn. However, as a result of good political lobbying in the United States Congress, forgetting what a budget is, which none of us have to forget conveniently. I might not gonna have to worry about it. Yeah, not gonna, yeah, we will. But that's another problem for another day. Yeah. American Airlines has benefited tremendously. These benefits are one of the reasons we believe they're not a going concern right now. As a result of the original CARES Act, like I think it was two CARES, the second, there was like three different CARES Acts there, but they're basically all grouped together. American Airlines was able to secure a loan of up to $5.5 billion from the U.S. Treasury, which they were required to do a little bit of, um, give a little bit of share options to the United States government. And they collateralized it with a little bit of their airline frequent flyer miles as a res this loan was expanded though in october to 7.5 billion dollars american airlines also received payroll support totaling 3.693 billion in q2 3 525 billion million in q3 and in q4 in the recent stimulus bill this program was extended with an extra $15 billion. And according to Reuters, American Airlines in line to receive about 3 billion of this 15 billion to help fund employee payroll support into 2021. And that $7.5 billion CARES Act loan, they've only accessed about 500 million of it. So but those are loans, the they gotta pay them back. Yeah, but that's part of the reason why we feel they're a long-term going concern that David's going to take up after. Okay. No, are you good on the slide? Yeah, next slide. The numerous actions the Federal Reserve took to help combat the COVID-19 pandemic are not relevant to this course, like all the minute details of that. But what is relevant is these actions have given companies such as American Airlines the ability to access the debt markets at attractive prices. This is demonstrated by American Airlines' ability to raise, for example, $1.2 billion in senior secured notes from Goldman Sachs, $2.5 billion in um, worth of five-year secured notes, and another billion in convertible bond notes. Now, I, I, if you're going to talk the, about this later, we'll leave it go till then. But why are they given? Why are firm, firms, lenders giving them so much money? One of the reasons I would say personally is, is that if you're getting 0.5% on 30 year treasury bond, you're forced to look for new ways to sustain your pension obligations that you need to sustain your endowments, any insurance companies. Insurance companies cannot sustain their liabilities on 0.5% 15, 10 year treasuries. When inflation's 2%, they can't go to Germany, they can't go to France, they can't go to Japan, they're negative. We're 0.5. You need to look for something. And when a company, even though it might be a long-term going concern, is giving an attractive yield, they need to take the risk because it's the only way they can support their liabilities. Because this is kind of outside this course, but a lot of these pension funds and endowments, mainly pension funds, have done way too optimistic estimates for returns in like seven, seven and a half percent, which is unsustainable in the long term if treasuries are only at 0.5 to 1%. So they need to find ways to make that up. Okay. I'm just well, wondering- It's really a matter of people need something to do with their money? They, what are you, if you're, if you need, to fund your pension obligations, if you're a pension fund, you have estimates as a state or a county or a teachers union of 7%. How are you gonna make that money with 1%? That means you're gonna be, be putting extra billions and billions into the pension fund every year, which they don't have the money to do. So what, do you, what would you do as a reasonable person? You have one option, which is to go into riskier securities that are paying higher 
higher yields. Okay. I think Sean had a question. Yeah, do you know what those uh, senior secure notes are backed by? Because I know with different airlines, they are like backed by like the airplanes or like I know Delta is backed by their um, frequent flyer program, which is something crazy. Some are frequent flyers, some are um, um, the airplanes. I don't know exactly what this one was built on, but I know the treasury loan was backed by frequent flyer miles. Okay. But I was going to discuss a little bit of more of the potential to raise money with those in my fourth one, which I guess I'll just discuss now because I was going to ad hoc that without a slide. But as you mentioned, airlines have taken advantage of their different means of capital of selling advanced tickets, selling the frequent flyer miles, and they have a lot of assets on their books, which not just in COVID, but in earlier times companies have been trying to be more asset light recently because assets lower return on assets return on all these ratios that they don't want to they want to increase and one way to do that is to go asset light so airlines before covid have been selling off the airplanes and just leasing them back which is one other means of funding that American Airlines can do in the near term to sustain themselves, but all that does is require constant lease payments and more expenses, growing expenses over the years, which as David's going to discuss, when you're not making too much operating income, that becomes hard to pay off. But another thing is, like you had mentioned with the frequent flyer miles, when you sell those now, you're getting cash now to sustain yourself in the short term, which is why they're not a going concern right now. But in the long term, every debt comes due and it's going to come due when people want to use those frequent flyer miles and you're not getting revenue out of those seats in three, four years down the line. Or you're not getting extra revenue from the card companies because they already have all their frequent flyer miles they need for years to come. Besides having eager debt and capital market willing to buy up debt, new debt and securities. American Airlines also has very little debt coming due over the next 12 months. Going concern opinions are issued when conditions and events place significant down on entity's ability to survive over the subsequent 12 months. If, however, American Airlines had significant amounts of debt coming due over the next 12 months, the company would possibly have been facing a going concern opinion. Amer this would have happened because American Airlines would have been looking at having not not having the free cash flows from operations to fund their debt. And if an event happened like in early March and April where the markets had seized up and nobody could raise funding at all, they would have ha been unable to satisfy their obligations. But as a result of capital raising done in the past few months, discussed previously, American Airlines has more than enough cash and short-term investments to pay off their debt coming due in the next 12 months. Cash and short-term investments are basically like money market funds that just earn a little bit of money that they don't leave in cash. So that's why they have a lot in money. That's why they have a lot in short-term investments. American Airlines has cash and short-term investments of $8.284 billion and current maturities of long-term debt and lease liability is only 2.71 billion. After paying off their debt, American Airlines has enough leftover cash to sustain their Q3 cash burn rate of $44 million a day for more than four months. And as I mentioned previously, they've only accessed 550 million of its $7.5 billion federal loan facility. If it drew down this full loan facility, it would give it enough cash to sustain the Q3 burn rate for an additional five months or for a total of 285 days, just with their current cash on hand at their Q4 burn rate. Now I'm gonna pass it off to David. All right, so just shifting focus, I think Noah did a really great job about explaining the short term and why we don't think it's a going concern risk for the next 12 months. However, in the next slides, we're going to analyze the several factors we believe are integral to future operational sustainability. So the first thing I want to look at is working capital. Uh, so for the last several years, American Airlines has had negative working capital, which is your current assets min minus your current liabilities. Uh, this is typical in the airline industry as flights are uh, booked in advance. So the airlines receive that cash and they could go pay off their uh, current liabilities with that cash. However, that creates a future liability, which is unearned revenue. And right now, American Airlines has four, uh, $4.2 billion in that unearned revenue. 
And if cancellations continue from COVID-19, uh, forecasting into 2021 and 2022, uh, that will have a significant strain on how the, uh, meeting that debt. So this raises concern for more issuance of debt if need be. I know Noah uh, talked about how they have that additional loan uh, for seven and a half billion dollars uh, with only 500 million tapped into or five, yeah, 500 million tapped into. So just forecasting that out, that's going to potentially add more debt to their already strained balance sheet. And as you can see just below, the working capital ratio for 2020 is 0.74. Um, so the next thing I want to touch on is the long-term debt. So in fiscal year 2020, uh, American Airlines issued and retired long-term debt of $11.6 billion and $3 billion, respectively. Uh, the $8.6 billion net increase in long-term debt weakens an already fragile uh, financial position of American Airlines. And so this poor financial position, coupled with the uncertainties regarding the travel industry's recovery, greatly impact uh, American Airlines' future as a going concern. So just to touch upon it briefly, um, as you guys can see below, the long-term debt at the balance sheet date of September 30th, they've increased uh, over 40% since last uh, quarter three of last year. So that's a lot more debt on their already uh, pretty bleak looking uh, balance sheet. And so- they're not, Oh, there you go. I was just gonna ask you about this. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. So. I, what essentially what I believe is that American Airlines is delaying the inevitable. Um, they have all of the, if you look um, in the bottom left, you could see their operating cash flow versus their debt payments and their debt issuance. Um, prior to COVID, they were barely breaking even there and they were issuing debt just to meet their obligations. So they were running almost full planes, growing, yeah. but they weren't making enough money to be able to service the debt. Exactly. So now they issued even more debt. So <laughs> it's kind of like they were already on the edge and COVID is kind of pushing them over for the future outlook of the company. Like there's no way they'll ever be able to pay off all this debt. Now, when you got that chart there that opens it up that there's black, red, and green, it looks pretty obvious. Yeah. Like even in the good years of 2017, 18, and 19, if you look at that, they were hardly breaking even on their debt payments versus their operating cash flow. And in 2020, of course, they're negative. So- And it doesn't look like much is gonna, 21 isn't gonna be a lot better at this point. It doesn't look like that, yeah. Do you think, oh, sorry. Um, do you think if COVID-19 didn't happen, do you think that they possibly would have been continuing on the same negative trend that they are now? Or do you think they would have been able to um, even out and possibly go back into the positives? That's a good question. Um, I think COVID-19 exasperated an already poor financial position of American Airlines and now is actually making it almost seem inevitable that they'll have to restructure or uh, liquidate in the future. So I think just overall COVID has just made the situation even worse for an already dire situation. Oh, what, sorry. Um, David Klein, I don't know, he's the Boeing CEO said that earlier this year, no, last year, that um, one airline or airlines were going to go bankrupt. Do you think he meant American Airlines? Uh, yes. In, future, in a future slide, I'm going to talk about how they're the most uh, cap, uh, over-leveraged comp, uh, airline company in the industry. And I think that means that they're probably at risk the most. Oh. So this is just the obligations by year. As you can see, they have contractual ob ob obligations of just shy of 12 billion this year. And if I go back to the previous slide, in a good year, they were making an operating cash flow of 3.5, 3.8. So it just looks like they're on this continuous trend of having to issue debt to meet these obligations or even defaulting on some of them, like the lease agreements and uh, the purchase agreements. I feel like those are at risk of default. And so where are they heading? So the balance sheet position, that's the visualization of the long-term debt and the total liabilities. Um, as you can see in the good years of 2016 through 2019, 
uh, they weren't cutting away at their long-term debt. I mean, <laughs> they paid off maybe a billion in that time while also having their liabilities increase quite significantly. So I think COVID-19 begs the question of, is it like, are they ever going to be able to pay this off? And I believe not. So they're clearly overcapitalized. Their total debt, which is total liabilities over total equity is actually 120%. They have an accumulated deficit, which indicates that the balance sheet is really not strong and that they're just over leveraged and in pretty bad financial state. Um, as, you, as I mentioned earlier, they're the most highly leveraged company in the airline industry and they could have significant issues uh, servicing their debt. So based on what Noah said and based on what I said, we came to these conclusions of where they're heading. So before COVID-19, American Airlines was operating with little leeway and significant constraints. Uh, they got downgraded in their credit rating in June to a BA3, which is a junk rating and it's a speculative bond rating, uh, which we believe will be just make it already more difficult for the organization to refinance and meet its outstanding obligations. Uh, American Airlines inability to pay down the principal of its long-term debt account balances prior to COVID-19 indicates that it will be unlikely they can do that in the future. Um, they've sold frequent flyer miles to credit card issuers and have engaged in sale and leasebacks, which is they sell their planes back to creditors and then they lease it back. That gives them a little more capital in the near term, but those two, um, those two uh, financing agreements just make it harder in the future to pay back their loans. And for those reasons, we believe that American Airlines ability to continue as a going concern beyond the next 12 months is highly unlikely. Okay. So, uh, oh, sorry for interrupting. I just asked. Sorry, I have a question. Um, sure, do you feel that it's just American Airlines that's a going concern? Or do you feel like the whole airline industry is a uh, going concern in the long run? I think you'd probably have to look at the whole airline industry based on the recovery of COVID. Because if you feel COVID is going to be fixed in March or April, companies that have less debt in the industry might have a chance. But if COVID is going to be going on for years and years, and it's true that we're never going to be able to go back to normal, for say, then possibly not, because they'll have too many airplanes, too much too much employees right now or because and they'll never recover. So I think it basically comes down to some companies are more vulnerable than others, but they're all going to be vulnerable if COVID goes on in the very in the long, long term. And just to piggyback off that, I know Southwest and Spirit Airlines were actually in pretty good balance sheet shape before COVID and COVID strained them a little bit, but they certainly are not at the same point American Airlines is at. Yeah, I think Southwest Southwest is actually expanding right now, correct? I do not know that, but- mm -hmm. yeah, A couple know. airlines were expanding. I think there was another European one. I forget the name of it. One European budget carrier was expanding just like Southwest because they're trying to take over a couple of the routes that some of the more indebted companies are giving up because they don't have the money to finance and keep all these spots. I think it was Ryanair. Yeah, Ryanair. I call like Ryanair usually, but. My, my question is, because I know there's been times in the past where airline companies have been in big financial trouble, um, but I know, you know, and they can't. Donald Trump even had an airline, I might point out. It went bankrupt, I think. No surprise. I'm sorry. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, they can't. Uh, they can't. They probably most likely won't be able to pay all of their debt obligations. But I know, for example, in the past, like uh, Delta and United, they filed for Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. And I mean, obviously, they're still functioning now. There's a lot of capital in in uh, the you know the assets that that these companies hold. So, do you think there's any possibility for severe downsizing and perhaps becoming less of a of a big player on the scene rather than necessarily like the the idea of a, a big going concern and perhaps them leaving the market completely as you said yourself they went through bankruptcy which the pre for bankruptcy is a going concern when you're going concern you're facing bankruptcy 
So right, right, right. you answered the question of, yes, they're going to be a going concern, but I do agree that we could see consolidation as we're seeing with Southwest try to acquire new routes, expanding the ones that are more financially secure, expanding right, while the exactly. ones that are less financially secure, like an American have to go, will have to go through a chapter 11, like you said, and come out like a Delta or somebody else and have less debt and more sustainable capital structure. But to go through that, they're going to be a going concern on the way through. So it ans- it verifies our point of they're a going concern in the long term. Okay, yeah. Who are the big losers if they do go bankrupt? You Big could holders. talk about the airports that they're connected to that they pay a lot of fees to to hold the um, to hold the different airline routes. Some of the benefiters would probably be a Southwest or somebody that could bid for those spots because it's actually very interesting. I was reading a few articles. I think Keith Rowe was one of them, or one of the London ones. You have to fly a certain. You have a certain. You get certain slots that you buy that are very valuable. And you have to fly a certain amount of times or you risk losing those spots. So at the beginning of COVID, when nobody was flying, airlines had to fly one or two people out every single day or every couple of days, because if not, they lose these spots. So these spots are extremely valuable commodities. Great Britain and other countries actually had to tell airlines, it's okay. You're, we're not going to kick you out of your spots for not flying these routes. That's how valuable these spots are and if american goes through a bankruptcy or something a company has a chance to try to go out and buy those spots as assets of american they could buy those assets out of bankruptcy so wouldn't that just be i mean isn't this just letting the free market take care of the strong survive and the weak go away but it too big to fail i would say you also have one of the well when have we ever seen that anymore when the banks too big to f- everybody's too big to fail nowadays. They're all they all threaten to lay off workers. The airlines threaten to lay off workers. They get fifteen billion dollars in federal aid. It's like we don't really have a economy anymore of a true free market. It's becoming more and more of a um, big companies rule, have all the power, work closely with government, get the benefits, and there isn't and it's very hard for incumbents to come in nowadays. I, I was gonna say I totally agree with Noah that there's no way the government's going to let that happen. I mean, if you're talking about solvency, I just don't see it happening when it comes to such a massive company that has such market cap over the airline industry. The government's not going to let it happen. They didn't let it happen this year, and they didn't let it happen in 2008, and they're not going to let it happen now. Do you think some of the other airlines are just going to pick up the pieces and it'll be stronger, will survive? But if American goes down, you also have multiple other airlines that would probably go down around the same time. And that would show a big drop in the airline workers and employees, which is the reason why they did this financial aid, which shows the clout these companies have on on Capitol Hill to be able to get their own separate payroll protection program. That just means they have good lobbyists, right? Yeah, but that means good lobbyists make it harder to go bankrupt and make you a too big to fail. Ivan, you're ready to jump in, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, so like um, we were talking about earlier, you were uh, you mentioned about like the slots, which yes, those are very hot commodities and they actually sell for millions upon millions, surprisingly. So one thing I wanted to throw out there, um, has there been anything released potentially by American airline where they would be considering scaling down their operation, closing some of their um, less flown routes and potentially selling some of those slots to right. other airlines, like for example, Southwest in order to try to recoup some of the capital in order to pay back their debt. Right now, I didn't do too much research on that for this project. Cause that wasn't really what we were looking at, but I would make one comment on that, which is, A lot of these payroll protection programs required you to maintain your workers and keep them on the payroll. So if you're keeping workers on the payroll, you can't really downsize because then you'd have to lay off workers and that would violate all these programs. So these programs are kind of propping all these airlines up to maintain their workers and to maintain these workers, you kind of need to give them something to do. Yeah. So I don't think at the current moment, but it would make sense in down the line because if you're struggling for financing and you need immediate cash, what do you do? You have to sell your assets. Just like perfect examples 
a lot of these soccer teams that have been facing issues in France now and lower leagues in England. When you have, when you need cash, you sell your assets, no matter your valuable or bad ones. You have to sell whatever you can get cash for immediately to pay off whatever you need to pay off immediately pay off imminently and that would be like you said those most prime spots because you have to find any way to survive scott what do you think about what about this whole thing are they sustainable is the debt too much should we let them go out of business um I guess I just have to agree with what everyone else is saying right now. Like it's just too early to figure it out. It's mostly based on like what they're going to do in the future and how they're going to pay off their uh, debts. Well, why do you think maybe somebody else can jump in on this? Why do we think, why is the stock doing so well when they have a, uh, if you look there, you can see that they have negative deficit. They have debt that it appears they can't pay back. Uh, but they're still, what, what are they at right now? I think it's because all the retail investors that are now trading this. It's at $15.76 a share. It's worth $9.6 billion. How can we look at that balance sheet, look at the hemorrhaging on cash? How do you conclude there's mark, there's $9.6 billion of value here? I think it's because all the retail investors like hyping this up because they think it's something that's not going to go away, but I think it is. And also the, I, to give them credit, they were smart of offering stock when their price was kind of high. Yeah. True. Or, I, I perhaps they believe that, that the government's just going to bail them out, that, you know, they're going to cover any, they're just not going to let them fail. They're going to get their money back. I disagree I think- with I disagree with that because I think once the government wants to get their money back and if they keep giving the money later on, they're going to be like, all right, we want your money back. And if American Airlines says we can't pay it back, they're going to say, okay, we're not going to give you enough more, any more money. So I don't know how, and there's like many other airlines out there. So if one goes away, it's not the worst thing in the world. That's what I think. I would go off the fact that personally, I believe it would be because people believe the airline industry is going to recover and they value the cash flows that they believe American are going to earn in the future when COVID ends and the airline industry recovers. Cause it's um, it, there has to be some available information. I don't believe it's totally one of those type of stocks that are just being bid up by the retail investor because you haven't really, I haven't personally seen much or heard much about retail investors in the airline industry. It's kind of a high carbon intensive, not very tech savvy, flashy industry. So I don't really think that's where the re- retail investors are right now. One thing I'd like to point out, um, Sean. So one of the reasons why I personally believe that it's not going to go out of business is because if we look at what happened with Boeing, the reason why the government one of the major reasons the government kept on bailing them out is first they have a lot of contracts with them because they don't just build commercial airplanes. They also um, build military grade vehicles. However, um, another thing is Boeing is one of the last, if not the last American like home built aircraft companies that are in the world. So it's the only it's America's industry. Yeah. And then when we talk, and then when you bring that into the airlines conversation, Um, When we talk about, for example, international flights, the only two ones that really come to mind to me from the U.S. is United and then American. I'm not sure if Delta is a U.S. company. Correct me if I'm wrong. Delta is. Oh, it is? Delta is, yeah. Okay. But I mean, even then, still, that's only three as opposed to how many of them are there flying in the world, right? There's dozens upon dozens. So if... The American Airlines is closed, right? They bankrupt and they close. Um, Aside of the fact that there's going to be a lot of job loss in that, there's also going to be some loss in faith in face of not just the company, but like of the country that they essentially represent their home base from around the world. Like, I don't know if that makes any sense. I know I might be contradicting some other points, but just for argumentative sake, Yvonne, in the future... I would not use Boeing because Boeing is a very nationalistic type culture. There's a very nationalistic thing 
in building airlines. You have U.S. with Boeing, Europe basically subsidized and built their own airline company and uh, Airbus, and China's now trying to build their own domestic airline company. For some reason, airlines as themselves are a very nationalist thing where every country wants their own a lot more than even airlines with international. It's its own very specific thing. They've fought for years now in the World Trade Organization, going back and forth the U.S. and Europe over subsidies to these airlines. They've had major tariff campaigns now against each other. They've both been found guilty of it. So it's a very separate one. It's not the best comparison one, by the yeah, way. I couldn't really think of anything better for that one. Sorry about that. No, I was just I was just saying for it's not. And they also have the military component. They're also one of the bil- biggest military contractors. And you know, one half of, one half of Washington, D.C. ain't going to ever give up any military contractors. <laughs> Yeah. And like and like the U.S. government will bail out Boeing because Boeing is like this hundred billion dollar market cap company. American Airlines owns nine billion. It isn't even the market cap on Boeing. It's the fact that it's a military company yeah. and it's the only domestic airline manufacturer we have. And airlines are needed because Boeing's only one that could provide some of the military, the airlines they need. Hey, Caleb, let's bring you in because I know you're going to look at it. If that was the case, then why did the government find Boeing two point five billion dollars? Because they still well, have to slap somebody on the wrist. And then K- I mean, Caleb yeah. is uh, going to talk about that. What are you going to talk to us about Boeing and their $2.5 billion slap on the wrist? Uh, I just read the article yesterday, and I was writing down some notes on it. So I think I'll probably end up having the presentation ready in, a, in, a, in probably a little less than a week or so. But, um, yeah, I don't think the fine's like an insanely high amount. Most of it's actually compensation for the families. There was 346 people that died in the two flights back in uh, late 2018 and early 2019. So that litigation just had been settled civilly. There's actually a criminal case that's um, going to be opened up by the Federal Aviation Administration as well, looking into what happened because the employees essentially just straight up lied about the safety features on the planes and that kind of the, the the new safety systems were what essentially had failed and caused the, the planes to to crash um, according to some of the some of the investigation that had happened after the crashes so the, the 2.5 billion I don't necessarily see it as an insanely high high amount that's gonna ruin the company or really uh, dig too too big into into their process however um, obviously, the fact that those 737 maxes were offline for and grounded for so long was actually a bigger hit for the company than the than the fine itself. Uh, it was estimated. I know Dave Calhoun is currently the CEO of Boeing. Um, there were some estimations that it. I can't remember from my notes if I look here, that it would end up. Uh, let's see if I can find that. Essentially, it was in yeah tw- around 20 billion. Um, the but had has, has been the estimated cost of Boeing since the entire uh, debacle had kind of uh, taken underway. So um, that that includes paying airline compensation and, and the halted production of of them. So they're actually um, stated as number two in size behind Airbus now, which uh, obviously wasn't the case a while back. I don't know if that answers the question, but that's kind of the information I just... Tiff, look at a Wall Street Journal. They had a ton of good articles over the years about all the different features that went wrong on the plane, all about the different reasons why Boeing needed to make sure the plane had to lie about the safety features to avoid certain testing requirements, including yeah. certain airline pilot stuff. There were and- two pilots that were involved in like corroborating all of the lies at the same time. But it hey, was look, if you because of... Article and, um, if you want to just maybe take a look at Boeing from a couple of different perspectives, you'd be welcome to. But it was because of the fact that they needed to make the plane seem so similar to a previous plane mm-hmm. that it could avoid having to go through extensive retraining of pilots. Right, exactly. So they could keep using that. I think it was like the same level B... Uh, simulation and style. they promised airlines that they would do that and if not they owed them a lot of money okay that makes yeah that makes a lot and of sense and they also had great articles describing all those like 
sensors that went wrong in the plane, all those like different components that went wrong. Like there's not just that one macro system. It's a lot more than just that system. Yep. Yeah. It just shows that you can't really, you can't cut corners in, in this industry in any way, especially when you're dealing with, with the safety features and the building of airplanes comes back to bite you. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, this, this question I want to address to, to Maddie, Ryan, Stephen, uh, Scott, and Margaret. You guys are taking 311. What was your reaction to this presentation? What do you think? Give me your reaction to what you just experienced. You guys are really good at financial stuff. And I am not. I thought it was um, interesting that American Airlines is going to be more affected long term from COVID rather than short term. I would have assumed it would have been more affected in the short term. I was I really impressed that's a little with how you got. Oh, I was really impressed with how you guys like put together the whole presentation and really um, organized all the numbers and made it seem very logical. I thought you did a very good job doing that. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. You guys know your stuff. Syed, too, you can jump in here. Margaret, Syed, Trent. I mean, I really enjoyed the presentation. Uh, you guys really spent your time with the financials, especially the percentages. Um, when you could tell uh, like a trend or anything like that and then explain it, provide a lot of evidence, you, you clearly put your research and time into this. And Honestly, I wish I could ask more questions. I'm still learning a little bit of the terminology a little bit myself, I'm gonna be honest. Um, but you guys did a really good job. I liked it. Um, I actually have some stock in American Airlines. Oh, you start. are? So are you long, long out or were you long or were you short? It was somewhat short, like a month ago, I invested in American Airlines because I knew that COVID would bring about a time of less travel activity. And I knew this was going to be a long-term investment for me because I know there's going to be an influx of more people needing to take the airplane, especially when you look at trends like, like students, for instance, people might need to go back to college. So, yeah. Margaret? It was just um, good to see how financial statements can be used more than just like for their numbers. Cause like, that's something that, has been emphasized like in this class and sometimes it's hard for me to see beyond the numbers to interpret it um but to see it interpreted like this and like the forecasting was beneficial to me okay Can i give a tip for your finance 311 people professor i would say the best way to learn how to interpret it is to read a lot of the papers and the business news and stuff because it really gives you a more non-numbers perspective. And then you combine the numbers with that to make good observations and good intelligent predictions. What are some, I guess, places you recommend to read up on? Because I actually was like, it's in my notes somewhere. I just- I read the, it. I've been reading the, I didn't get my license till 21. I failed my driving test three times. <laughs> The only good thing that came out of it was every day on the bus, I'd read the Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal is uh, amazing. I've been reading the Wall Street Journal for five, six years now. And it's also only four bucks a month for college students. It's if, free now. Yeah, you know, if you're a Geneseo student, it's free. Even better. If you, gotta, if you so read it, you're going to learn so much. Free, or can you read? Stuff. Sorry. I just, I, I remember before trying to access like the, the free subscription through Geneseo, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. Like, is it free to like view it on the app and have an account or is it free to just like view the articles like through like some Probably library? Or it's a, you can do it. You can set up, it's like setting up a normal account so you can have it on the app and read whatever you want. It was kind of confusing at first for me too, actually. It's a little, okay, could, yeah, it's, it's $4 a, little a month janky. having your own account can be worthful. We could be useful. If it's free, then I might as well just have it for free, you know? Yeah, use it until you have you Take it for free until you have to pay for it. Yeah. Or you, did you do that through just Wall Street Journal and then there's a way to say I you're like Geneseo and Wall Street Journal together? And I found like a, a link on the Geneseo yeah. website. 
think it's okay. on like the wiki okay. or something like that. Yeah, I right. can. I'll put it if you give me a second here. Yeah, I did not know about that at all. So thank you guys for sharing that. Let me. Uh, I can actually. If you give me two seconds. Um, just they as don't a, give you um, all the numbers, but it gives you those insights to combine with those numbers to give you a more perspective of those numbers. Yeah, it's always what you do with them. It's not just the numbers because the numbers are the numbers. Here's um, I'll put it in the the Dropbox here, the chat room here. So that's if you want to do that. Now, Dan, how are you, now that you've seen their presentation on American, how are you going to in, use all that for Southwest when you get into your project here? What, is, what are you doing for Southwest, Dan? Um, I'm just doing the application projects for Southwest. So I just did one of it. And uh, this was pretty surprising because Southwest has been in a pretty good position. They seem like they're gonna continue to be going forward. So seeing all this, it'll give me a new perspective um, and ways to look at all the debt they, they're taking on um, the course of the pandemic. Good stuff. Other thoughts here, Trent, you were gonna say something? Yeah, uh, you guys might not even know, but I was wondering if you guys knew of any other companies that were kind of in a similar position as American Airlines. Good question. Um, thinking, I know you could say some of the other travel stocks, some of the hotels, cruises, well, even though I personally made a four, I personally made a good bet on cruises at the heart of the pandemic. So yeah, I'm I was going to just say cruises as well, like Carnival. I bet yeah. it at $25 and Royal Caribbean's at 75 now. So I'm kind of a little biased on it. <laughs> so, okay. But probably you would say the other travel stocks that are liable for Pre -co going back to pre-COVID travel, pre-COVID social interaction, just more of a liable if we're stuck in a post-COVID world indefinitely. Yeah. Because yeah, they do don't you have the revenue. Like the post, uh, do you think like in the post-COVID world, like, like people are going to be weary of using airlines as much as they used to, I guess the same could go for cruise ships too. Like I, I, I'm just curious if they'll ever be back I, at the position. My personal concern is that business travel doesn't return. I second what David said there. Business travel, I don't think is coming back. But what made me bet on the cruise lines originally was my mom used to, my mom never went on cruises, but she used to tell me these stories about how people, there were like a bunch of weird like salmonellas and a bunch of other things that have been in cruises all the time. And people, in my opinion was, if people went back for all these crazy diseases and everything, then people will go back for COVID. That was my opinion. But I agree with David that business travel's probably not gonna return because if you can do it from home and save money, save time and get your employees a more convenient option, you're not gonna spend the first class travel money. But you also can't, keep as good of an eye on them, make sure that they're working and following through. But that's more business travels, more like going from New York to London for a meeting. If you can do, if you can do that London meeting at home now, they're not going to want to spend the $3,000 for a business class seat or some hotels, business class seat, put somebody on a plane for six, seven hours, back six, seven hours. They can use that time to get them to work. But you are I think, right. I that, agree. I, I think, I mean, I used to go to New York a lot and I wouldn't think anything of just going down for two meetings for an hour. Now I wouldn't even, you know, why should I go? I can do this online. You know, there's certain value in meeting in person, but from a cost perspective, I don't know. I, I think there's going to be some permanent changing. I look in the at tourism business, leisure business, Dave and what's, is it Dave? What's the one that's Dave and Buster's, Buster's and Dave's? Dave and Buster's. That's Dave and Buster's. I, I don't know how they're ever going to survive. Yeah, maybe they shouldn't survive. Have they, are they still even around though? Like, I feel like the Chuck E. Cheese and those Dave and Buster's, like, I don't ever hear them anymore. Even though I've seen like one Chuck E. Cheese in Danbury, Connecticut, but. Mm -hmm. 
You're just getting older, so Chuck E. Cheese isn't meaningful to you. I never went to Chuck E. Cheese's. Didn't we never they bankrupt in the pandemic? I think they've been bankrupt like three times before, to be completely honest. <laughs> they were reselling re the pizza slices, supposedly. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese was. Okay. People My were getting boxes of pizza there. with like different size slices because <laughs> they were like haphazardly like just uh, puzzle making them in together with like pizza slices that were already used. Yeah. Okay. Um, good job, Dave.